Binary information is moved from one place to another in a digital system via pulse trains. When a receiver of some type is reading the digital signal, a high in the pulse train translates to a 1 and a low in the pulse train translates to a 0. Each of these pieces of information is called a bit, and the amount of time that is spent reading the incoming pulse train to determine if the signal is high or low is called a bit time. So when we want digital information read, we need to make sure that the bits all conform to the same time code. This is called timing, and timing is done using a periodic waveform called the clock. In the clock pulse train, one period is one bit time. During this bit time, the incoming pulse train of data is read and the information is stored and conveyed every time the clock pulses. Normally, this is done on the leading edge of the clock pulse, but not necessarily always. So when the clock pulse's leading edge hits, the bit time begins, and the data pulse train is either high or low. If high, then 1. If low, then 0. The data can change from high to low during the bit time, but this will have no effect on storing or transferring the data. The data is only read at the clock's leading edge, or is only read at the clock's trailing edge if that is how the clock is configured, but never in between. In order to visualize this process, we use what are called timing diagrams. If you're following this series as if taking a class, then we have reached the point where my insistence on using graph ruled paper, or even better, engineer paper, becomes evident. The graph ruling makes it easy to draw these repetitive square wave sequences and ensure that when looking at things like this timing diagram, the multiple waveforms are all lined up properly. So here we have a simple timing diagram. The clock determines when the pulse train representing our digital information is read. So in the first bit time, the pulse train is high, resulting in a digital 1. In the next bit time, the pulse train is low, and so we get a 0. This continues to the end of the pulse train. The resulting binary sequence, in this case, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, is the bit sequence represented by the waveform. We don't need a clock for every single waveform that we may be receiving. We can use the same clock for any number of incoming waveforms. Let's take a look at an example where three waveforms are coming in. For this example, we want our output bit sequence to reflect when all three waveforms are high. So in other words, we only get an output of one when all three waveforms are high all at the same time. Going through our diagram, at bit time one, we have high, low, low. So the output here is zero. At bit time two, we have low, high, low. So the output is zero. At bit time three, we have high, high, low. Almost, but this output will be zero as well. We continue on in this manner until we get to bit time seven. Here, all three waveforms are high. So the output here is one. At bit time eight, all three are low. So the output is zero again. Our example bit sequence would be six zeros, one, and another zero. What we see here is the basics of data transfer. Different methods of data transfer will be covered in the next video. I hope you learned something interesting here and I'll see you in the next video.